This is arc analysis. This bananas. Wait. Um, what? The first glance. No, it's not first glance. No, it's not first glance. <laughs> it's arc analysis. Why? Why did you? Why did you stutter that? You're like, oh wait, hold on. Uh, now I have to say something funny. What is it? Uh, oh yeah, first glance. Like that was horrible. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to write a Deadpool. Man. That's how it works. That's what you want to write, Deadpool. Banana. Yeah, just around Lisa says drop a fruit. Chimichanga time. Mm, chimichanga. Time to make the chimichangas. Yeah, chimichanga. Maximum effort. It's not that hard to write. It. Bitch planet. I'm talking a lot of shit. Volume two. <laughs> President bitch is what it's called. It, Published by Image Comics, uh, written by Kelly Sue DeConnick, drawn by Valentin Delandro, 2015-ish. We're back. Volume 2. We, we get did to see what happens one. in the cliffhanger. Oh, wait yeah. a minute. Not really. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the thing. is that We left we, the first volume, which is number 1 to 5. We're like, let's finish this off because we knew there's only another five issues. So this is volume 2 from number 6 to 10. We're like, let's let's just wrap it up like we did. You know, let's let's do it yep. like we sometimes do, and uh, let's take a turn. Yeah, and let's take a for, turn. Not to like help improve any of the things that we wanted to in the first volume, to like create more issues for us to be like, where are you going with this? Like, what yeah. is happening here? Yeah, this was unearned. Yeah, yeah. H- how is this the ending? <laughs> yeah. So, I'm just trying to. I'm trying to. Um, Trying to formulate, like, I'm trying to group my... Because when I was looking online, right, I like to just kind of glance around. And, and once I read something, I like to kind of not get other opinions, but I kind of like to get my finger on the pulse of what's going on out there. Yeah, it's good and to gauge to at least see just, where yeah. people... So it doesn't change things. doesn't change how I feel about things, but I just like to know where we, where it stand, where we stand. And they're like, people love, the general consensus is that the, this volume is better than the first one. Like, oh yeah, volume two is a lot better than the first. And I was like, I don't really agree. I thought I was crazy because I'm like, I don't, I didn't enjoy this one. As there's parts of it I really enjoyed, but I didn't enjoy it as much as the first one because in the first one, remember we were talking about uh, if you go back to our arc analysis number uh, sixty eight, when we were talking about volume one, it we kind of have this like longest yard type setup yeah. where they're they're assembling, they're, 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 prison, yeah, assembling. they're all they're all suffering yeah. together. We, we we see who the alpha is. It's Cam. She's been drafted by uh, the ops which is like big big business and the the patriarch to create a team to play this crazy game that stacked up against you we're all in me and you were like bro this is we've seen this we've watched this movie it's fucking great and while it doesn't even deliver on that promise in that issue it ends with like on the cliffhanger of like oh shit something big is going down stay tuned to see how this all shakes out for like the band of myth misfits and like we don't get that especially not even after issue five issue six volume two starts on a flashback on a character that spoilers we lost in issue five mm-hmm. yeah if you're reading this far then you know that miko's dead right? right so and she was the daughter of the man who designed bitch planet and was now being brought back there to kind of, to design the archetype for like the arena that they were going to play in. Yeah. We never get any more games. We don't even they don't even talk about the games anymore. That was just a plot device to get things moving to where uh, the writing team or the creative team wanted it to go. So that was a disappointment on its own because I thought it was going to be a little like, more resolve, than that. Resolve the game, like yeah. what's the fallout, and then give me the flashback or like. What's the final score? Like, what's the repercussions? It's like, nah, like, someone's dead. This was the plan all along, I guess, if you're on the off side. But they're all prisoners. You didn't need to go through this elaborate game set up for you to kill one of them. To, like, break their morale? Maybe? I don't know. So, like, it, you feel cheated. But then you read the story that's, like, it's a pretty good story. Like, in itself, issue six is, a, like, a good way of learning about Miko. You know, that is just really, really cool. I... I think the big problem with this book is that it's just not long enough. It's 10 issues. Like, there's a lot going on. If yeah. This should have been... I, I was, I'm trying to search around while we're talking about like why it was limited to 10. It's a, That was the plan. It was 10. And I was like, this is... Really? There is a triple feature uh, afterwards, another um, 
another five issues after this called Bitch Planet Triple Feature. So maybe we'll just check that out too. Um, but like, it, 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 that's not even earned. Like, it doesn't no. earn a sequel. And based on the way that you set up stuff, it's weird you took the choices that you did on how to to get this run out. Like, I, I swear you told me Volume 2 is award winning. Uh, mm. I, I can see where they may have got that shine. Like, especially with issue six. It's like, it's an isolated story. But, like, why didn't you use that frame device for the entire run? Like, why didn't each issue start with, this is Cam, this is Penny, yeah. this is yeah. Stacy, this is Donna. And then the second half of that issue is, like, oh, yo, and then there's this game that we got to play in and assemble each other, right? Like, that was right there for you. Like, she was already yeah. writing like that. And then chose different. And that ends, and then we abruptly get thrown into this, uh, who's in the cell? Who's in this isolated cell? And we have to figure yeah. out this mystery. And like that's not a fun story. It's weird. No, and, and like like okay. Also, we understand that it's basically a commentary on the state of sexism in America. Like that's that's what well, that's not lost on us. Like we understand. I'm speaking for both of us here, yeah. so I apologize if I'm, I'm out of term. But we understand what this is, and that's cool. We appreciate that. And the parts that that presents are really well written. We talked about it in the uh, the last time we did we, we did this. Whereas like the way that the men talk to the women, this is like, it's very clever. It's right. diabolical, but it's clever. But that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean it's, the story is, is great. Cause I don't, the characters aren't really fantastic in my opinion. No. They're not really well fleshed out. Like you were saying, the first run, we get the one issue on Penny, which was just dope. But then it's kind of like, her personal arc is already done. In this volume, you learn about Miko, um, and that's interesting, but why, like, we need, like, I want to know about, I want to know more about these characters because I want to like them. Right. I want to be involved with them. I really want to know what's going on with Cam because she's the most bad, interesting she's a badass, right? Like, yeah. I'm, yeah, she's the most interesting character yeah. easily. And I want to know more about her, but you don't they, get much about her. They want us to invest in Miko after she's already dead. So, like, that's unearned. We miss out yeah. on the partnership between yeah. Penny and Miko because they were developing at, like, issue five, this whole, like, mm-hmm. yo, I'm fucking blocking. And then, yo, just cook up the gut, right? Like, yeah. They're doing all the football moves. Yeah. And they're getting along. But you kill one, and then, like, Penny's kind of broken. But you don't see Penny's fallout from that. And then no. you jump into this whole, like, oh, yo, Kev's got a sister. We got to find this sister. It's like, ah. Uh, like when you were saying earlier, it's about like it's not lost on us the feminist outlook and perspective that they're trying to write in this book. But like you could have just leaned on that in the entire way and like hammered it home and turned this into like a satire or like played up as many yeah. different tropes in that vein. You tried to tell so many different stories and then didn't wrap up the storylines that you started that yeah. as a reader we both get frustrated because we're like, yo, this could have been good, but you have yeah. what three more issues left to, to explain the president, why she's top shit. Why she yeah, it just comes out entire, of nowhere. The bitch planet, the entire planet. Yeah. It's like, okay, we got a president back. And then like, <clears throat> it crumbles a patri- patriarchy. Like, this should have been started from issue one. If, like, this was your your main, like, this is where we go end it. Yeah. But she yeah. came off like an afterthought. And uh-huh. she's the savior? Like, man. And then you meet, you meet, um, like I said, you do get to meet Cam's sister. And the whole show, like, oh, you have a brother. She's like, no, I don't. And it's like, so it turns out that there's a whole nother part to Bitch Planet where uh, they, they house uh, transsexuals or trans identified people. So it's like, but you get them for half an issue. And I'm like, well, I want to know about them too. <laughs> like, Something you got to set up in the like first and second issue. Like Bitch Planet yeah. is not only this, but there's also this stuff over here. Mm-hmm. So at least the reader knows, hey, at some point we're going to try and find this other part of the planet that could be interesting for our character. Yeah. Nope, no, unearned. It's very rushed. I, I swear this like this book should have been twice as long, like twenty issues or twenty four issues, and just like enough time to let it breathe and like, yeah, talk about all the things they yeah. Don't talk about. Like you said, there's a you said there's, there's a lot going on here. Mm-hmm. It's not just one story. There's a whole lot going on here because there's a, a, the, lot, a lot of interesting ideas, but yep. you don't you don't get to dig in deep to them, right? So like yep. you're starting to scratch the surface, and there's conversation. Me and you've been talking back and forth about like, yo, what if they just kept running with this thing, right? Like. Mm-hmm. At the very least, the fact that the more more cameras in the showers, right? Like just the all the stuff that they're trying to play in that, or how systematically every place in Bitch Planet 
inevitably breaks out in a fight. Like, that's a whole story you could have just read. Like, all these guys uh-huh. are just, like, brawlers because they have to beat up someone to climb up the system and stay alive in this. But all those cool, interesting ideas are, like, sprinkles. Like, we don't uh-huh. get frosting, and we need frosting uh-huh. to, like, cover all the, the space that we want to cover. Yeah. Stuff. The, there are there are cool parts in this too. We're not. I don't want to just poo poo all over everything, but like there's the part where um, Miko's father, like he knows he wants to see his daughter because he right. he makes it to Bitch Planet. He's like, I want to see my daughter, and the AI like they're like, well, she's dead, but they don't want to tell him that because yeah. they don't, they think he's just gonna bail, and he probably would have. So they try and pretend like she's alive, and like you can't they, see they, her, but you can see this, yeah. this projection of her. They use and, the AI to like trick him and stuff. Yeah, again, and he like, that's, instantly that's another... figures it out. He's just like, yeah. "All right, well, she's not here." That's another like uninterested idea that I feel like if the writer had been p- playing up, they could have used that more because we we're talking about how interesting AI was in the first volume. Mm-hmm. But because it's so usually lo- used in these two issues, when they use it to like trick the father that you can't really hold on to that. Like he has to figure out like, this is like something's up, but his response is like, so matter of fact, he's just like, all right, cool. I'm just going to free other prisoners now. And like, like chaos happened here because I've been wronged. I was like, there are better ways of telling this story. Like, yeah. I didn't feel his movements, his justifications to just free everybody. Although I enjoyed when everyone was free. Right. Cause then you get to see the pandemonium and like, yeah, how uh, rough and rumble like these women are, which is great, but like the ends never justify the means. Like the the places we end up, never feel like they're earned by the writer to get us there. Yeah, because so there's kind of like two different ways to look at this book, right? It's like if you look at it as like a as just as a comic book, like I think we we are. It leaves something to be desired because like we want more. Like there's good stuff here, and we want more of it. But if you look at it as like a like a social commentary, then I understand what excuse me why a lot of people adore it so much. But another complaint that I saw online was that this doesn't give us any answers like to the the issues that's presented. I'm like, well, right. that's not a surprise. It's not. It's a comic book. It, it's it's more for like um, understanding and perspective and you know educational and maybe even foreboding. But you don't. It's not like oh, this is how we fix. Uh, sexism, <laughs> right? Like this is we're just gonna fix it. Was like no, no. This is guys, come on. Like just enjoy it, read it, learn from it. Um, kind of maybe see the duality between this book and 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 real life. But what am I learning for? But, like I'm learning. But from, that's like, but that's but yeah, that's what I'm saying though. But then as but we're not reading it for that really. To be honest with you, I'm reading it as a comic book. So I'm like, okay, well, I care about these characters, or I want to care about these characters, mm-hmm. but I can't really because I don't know them. I want to care about the writing because there's hints of like there could be something good here. Yep. But there are certain choices, and we talked about the first one too. The fact that the writer chose to make basically all their heroes black and brown in a system that's, right. that's yeah. uh, showing all black and brown as like impoverished, enslaved, and the prisoners. Like that's a choice. Mm-hmm. So I would have loved for you to have like if you're gonna have hammer home like a happy ending, a happy ending, or like a quote unquote solution to the problem, do it. Otherwise, like, I have to look at this as, like, not good. <laughs> yeah. Because there's so much interesting that you didn't want to follow through with. And you already duped me in the first volume with all the stuff. I was like, okay, cool. All this could pan out and come together. But then you decided, no, like, I had my, like, three other plots in volume two. Like, the, I guess the main ones, right? Like, it's Miko. It's, like, the follow with Cam. And like the brother sister, brother sister, sister situation, and then mm-hmm. the president. It just comes out of nowhere in the ninth issue. And it's like she's gonna solve everything. It's like I understand, like she's the last female president, so the, but it's like she'll give power to the people and all this. And I'm like, what happened she's to in, the sports league? Yeah, she's in Bitch Planet. Like, how's she getting? Like, they got ships. Yeah. They got money. I guess so. Yeah, I get whole from bitch. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, this thing, there's like the... You, the revolution's on this <laughs> isolated prison moon. That like, yeah, it's very. All, all the men have money and cameras on. So like, you even wrap that one up. Couldn't they just self destruct it? Or like, oh no, I guess he no. That's that. Well, that's what that's what Miko's dad's trying to do. But but he's still stuck on the planet too, right? Like yeah. I could just keep bringing ships over and dumping crazy, insane 
whether or not animals, people, or like things onto that planet in terms yep. of like Hunger Games world and just keep watching. That shit. <laughs> like, it's great that you're a designer and architect and you have the kill code to like unlock everything in the prison. But if you don't have a pilot's license or you have to depend on the, the dudes that you're now turning your back on to get back home, like you fucked. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even play that up, right? Like, isn't there always a looming threat the fact that you're isolated on bitch planet? Yeah. So, you know, uh, you want to ask me what I think of this book? <laughs> yeah, I do, because we rate these on a good or bad basis. Boom for good, ba for bad, and whoosh for what I just read. The last volume we gave a whoosh to because we're kind of like, what's going on here? Like, where are we going with this? There wasn't much. There was enough there. It was, it was probably a whoosh leaning towards a boom. Mm -hmm. This time, I gave it a ba. <laughs> Yeah, I was waiting for you. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't, I did not enjoy it as much as I wanted to. And that, like, there's good stuff here, but I'm just kind of like, eh. Not enough. If you kept doing what you're doing in the first volume, you would have yeah. at least stuck the landing, and that could have got you a boom. But this is a bomb. Yeah. There's so many things that frustrate you in the second volume. Yes. On top of them saying, like, it got awards. So, like, you're digging in deeper to see, oh, this is, this is maybe where people were thinking, the author and the writer saying something mm -hmm. cool but there's all this shit around it that as a comic book reader you're like this don't make sense though like i'm not enjoying reading this because who is this where what is this yeah. what just happened and i have to ask that to the pages and you you know man that's, that's a blast. yeah i had to go back one time i was like where did they find Wait, what's going on with the bread? How do they know there's just a random cell, random cell that's like over there like, like what do you know who's in there it's like yeah no yeah. Uh, what? So you know. Yeah, I misspoke at the beginning. I said this was, this this was published in 2015. It wasn't. It was 2017. The first volume was 2015. I just kind of get out of get out get out of two hours. So I just want to correct that. But yeah, I don't know, man. That's give us some more plugs. What's your Gmail if you want to get a hold of Dank and Coke, Coke and Dank, D Lethal Weapons, where he can be found at Comic Patrol Pod at Gmail dot com. And uh, I think we got a Twitter. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Comic on the store patrol. Stab boy. Bitch. Planet.